I'm Michael Woods, Chief Scientist at the Asian Turfgrass Center and also an adjunct professor in the Department of Plant Sciences at the University of Tennessee. Today, I'm going to take a walk along this coast, a bit of a botanical walk, looking for different kinds of grasses and seeing in what type of growing environments we can find them, what type of ecological setting the grasses are growing in in the wild. Earlier this week, I was at Takitomi Island, which we can make out in the distance, about 10 kilometers away over there. And I saw there, growing in the rocks beside the ocean, in a very dry environment, different types of Zoysia matrella or Zoysia pacifica, which is a very fine-bladed grass. I've been walking for about 500 meters or so, and in general, the I've just found sand because the the sand has been too unstable to really support any plant growth. But I see some grass over here, and we can walk over and see what grass it is. It's obviously going to be a very salt tolerant grass, and we can also see there's a bit of a tidal swamp here, some water, and this grass is growing down into the water. This could be seashore paspalum. We will sometimes find seashore paspalum growing in this type of environment. But in fact, this is not seashore paspalum. This is Sporobolus virginicus, sometimes called saltwater cooch. And one of the ways that we can distinguish it from seashore paspalum, because they have a similar color and a, a similar leaf texture. Also, the seed heads are different, but we don't always see seed heads here. There, I don't see any flowering, so we wouldn't be able to distinguish uh, the grasses based on that. Another thing, if we look up close at the, at the ligule, the ligule here is actually a fringe of hairs, but when we look at an image of seashore paspalum coming up, we'll see that there's a small membrane without the hairs. So that's one way to distinguish between these two grasses. As I walk some more, I see another bit of a tidal swamp over here. So now we have seashore paspalum. You can see it's growing right on the edge and even into this water. And if I pull up one of these stems and take take a look, you can see there's the very distinctive seed head of seashore paspalum. Now this will be the common type this will be the common type of seashore paspalum not not the turf type which is a bit more dwarf but this is the type of natural growing environment in which we find seashore paspalum namely that is a tidal swamp with uh, very saline conditions um, next to the ocean and one of the reasons why I always say that the seashore paspalum is such a difficult grass to maintain is because tidal swamps are just an awful playing surface for sports, for golf course fairways, for football fields, etc. So trying to manage a firm surface that's good for playing sports while also producing the type of environment, namely the environment that has a lot of water in it, in which seashore paspalum can thrive, can be very, very difficult. I've continued the walk for more than a kilometer and on this rocky area I've found a small patch of Sporobolus virginicus or saltwater cooch. Now I'm going to continue on. I'm still looking to see if I can find some zoysia here. Well it looks like I may have found some zoysia. I can see a very fine bladed leaf uh, grass growing in the cracks in the rock up here and I think it's zoysia. Uh, yes, that will be Zoysia, a Zoysia pacifica or a Zoysia matrella. This is very similar to what I found in the same type of environment growing at Takitomi Island earlier this week. How can we tell that this is Zoysia? Well, um, in the absence of a seed head, it's a little bit tricky, but we can tell that the leaf blade is very fine. Um, if, if I touch the leaves, I'll find that they're a little bit stiff uh, compared with the seashore paspalum, which we wouldn't find here anyway, or compared with the salt wa uh, saltwater cooch or Sporobolus virginicus. Now I pulled off some of the Sporobolus virginicus earlier um, from, from the rock I was at, and here's what it's like when it gets dry and it's very limp, and if I touch the, the leaves, they're not stiff. Now this grass here, the uh, 
the zoysia, uh, I'll pull this off. It's dry also, but when I touch it, it's still a bit stiff, still offering a bit of resistance. And that tells me, yeah, this is, this is not the uh, sporobulus. This will be the, the zoysia. In fact, if we, if we look at it up close, we can see what appears to be an old single spikelet, which is very distinctive for a zoysia, um, a zoysia seed. I've continued on a little bit further and I think I've come across what was a telegraph station for an underwater telegraph cable that Japan had uh, before World War II and I believe this was destroyed by bombing at the end of World War II. And what we find here, now we're up a little bit from the water, it's less salty and it's very dry in, an, in a disturbed area and now we find Bermuda grass. Um, the Bermuda grass grows well here, it's very drought tolerant, but we see it tends to be rather infested with weeds here. It's, uh, it's got some goose grass in it, I think. It's got some smut grass or uh, Sporobulus indicus, and it doesn't really form a mono stand. I've continued from the telegraph station over there, past these rocks along the ocean, and I've come up to a point where there's some different kinds of grasses growing in the cracks in the rock. The first one we see here is Sporobulus virginicus. In the even drier areas is a much finer grass and this will be a Zoysia matrella or a Zoysia pacifica. It's really cool how this grass grows here in the very dry areas and it's almost like a fine fescue in appearance and it's growing right here by the ocean. In fact, we can look over here and see it's growing in these cracks in the rock. And again, this is the zoysia. I found some of the zoysia on this point that has the seed head showing. And we can see it's got the very distinctive zoysia seed head. So this is clearly a fine bladed zoysia. Well, I found a lot of zoysia growing here. Uh, probably the most extensive stand of it on a, a point right here at the corner of Ishigaki Island. And one, one thing that I'd like to point out is the very short distance between the internodes. Because of this, zoysia creates a very dense turf with a fine leaf blade, excellent salt, drought, and shade tolerance as well. Zoysia matrella, or manila grass, should be used more in Southeast Asia and seashore paspalum should be used less. Seashore paspalum is more susceptible to damage from insects. It's also more susceptible to damage from fungal diseases, and it's less tolerant of drought. This goes back to where we find it growing naturally, in tidal swamps. We find the characteristics of the grasses as turf can be traced back to where we find them growing in nature.